Foreign Minister, good to have you with us on this news out. What is happening in your country? Uh, yes, hello. So uh, today uh, the situation in Ukraine is stable, but it is stable at the lowest point. There is a big misunderstanding between the government and the opposition. In the last days, uh, the government did a big step forward in fulfilling uh, the demands from the opposition. But unfortunately, the opposition is not taking responsibility of what's happening uh, in Ukraine and unfortunately today is facing a new phenomenon of raising extremism. For the first time uh, in our country we can see extremist groups, people uh, who are not controlled by anyone, they are seizing governmental buildings, attacking the police. And today we call the opposition in Ukraine. If they really want to control also their part of the people's movement. So please distance from the opposition extremist groups who are making riots on the streets of Kyiv. Where is your country's president, Mr. Foreign Minister? There are a lot of people who don't believe him when he says he's got the flu and therefore can't run the country. Yes, uh, today uh, President Yanukovych uh, is ill of influenza and he is at his residence. He is uh, in Kyiv. Is he aware of what's going on still in his country? Is he still running Ukraine? Yes, yes, of course. So, but uh, uh, in the last days, uh, President was leading negotiations with the opposition and it looks like we have found common interests and everything what dependent, uh, dependent uh, from the government was implemented. And we, today we call the opposition also implement uh, our agreements. Firstly, uh, just recently the Ukrainian parliament passed a law on amnesty and the law uh, uh, may come into force on the condition uh, that uh, all governmental buildings would be released. So you see, we you can see, do I, I, our I'm, part to release I all want to put this to you, if I may, Foreign Minister. The, the statement from the Defence Ministry, um, on behalf of all troops, it says, servicemen and employees have called on the Commander-in-Chief, that is the President, to take urgent steps uh, to stabilise the situ situation. They, the Army clearly doesn't believe uh, he is in charge properly. Oh, uh, first of all, uh, the army is not involved in the situation. And uh, the uh, protest and uh, the place where the protests take place is quite localized. It's a small place, but in the very center of, of the city, of the capital city. So what we want now, we want now that the government has fulfilled all its obligations and today it's up for the opposition to implement their part of, of the obligations taken. Tell me a little bit about uh, your reaction when you saw the photographs of a man who, if you like, has become the fulcrum now of opposition protest, Dmitry Bulatov, the man who says he was kidnapped, the man who says uh, his kidnappers attempted to crucify him, that they cut off part of one ear and who is now under guard in a Ukrainian hospital. What did you think when you saw those pictures? So I also saw those pictures on the internet. So, but uh, I called back Kyiv to clarify the situation about this man. And uh, now it looks like that uh, the alleged story that he was kidnapped and tortured is not absolutely true. The investigation is going on. Physically, this man uh, in a good condition. The only thing he has is a scratch on one of his cheeks. So uh, let's wait for the investigation, which will reveal actual facts, what happened to this specific person. OK, you're saying that his story is, is made up. What do you say actually happened to him? Uh, I'm not in a position uh, to command the investigation, sorry, and so let's wait 
for the officials uh, to tell us the story who are directly involved into the investigation. I'm going to ask you about a couple of events taking place where you are. One was a meeting you had with the German foreign minister in which he asked you to allow Mr. Bulatov to leave the country if he wanted to get medical treatment yeah. abroad. Is he free to leave Ukraine? Yes, I called this morning to some respective persons and uh, they told me that uh, Today uh, he is in the hospital, he is not detained. The only thing left, this is uh, actually an interview with the uh, police investigator and after uh, this interview, interrogation, he will be absolutely free to go anywhere he wants. Let me ask you about John Kerry. Uh, he has said uh, Ukraine should be free to choose as his partner whoever it wants. And the European Union president, president of the Council, Herman von Brumpy, says Ukraine's future is with Europe. Where do you see your country's future? Yes, uh, I absolutely agree. Firstly, uh, the uh, total territory of Ukraine is in Europe. We are linked with the European Union with many economic, cultural, historical ties. So uh, the European Union is our important trade and economic partner. So, but on the other hand, we have, we have similar strategic relationship with Russia. And from the geopolitical point of view, Ukraine holds a strategic position. So, and uh, I believe that one day this, our geopolitical advantage uh, will benefit to the Ukrainian people. But today it looks like East and West are competing to each other regarding Ukraine. And we don't want to be a playing card in this game. We want to identify our future itself, to be more affiliated with the European Union and to keep our strategic relationship with Russia. So one final question to you, Mr. Kozhara, as Foreign Minister of Ukraine. What will you say to the Foreign Minister of the United States, John Kerry, when you meet him? So, firstly, I will inform Mr. Kerry about the current situation in Ukraine. And uh, I have uh, a couple of proposals how the United States may be helpful in uh, regulating this very difficult situation. And no doubt we will hear later uh, what they are. Uh, Leonid Kozara, thank you very much indeed. Foreign Minister of Ukraine talking to us there from a security conference. You're very conference. warmly welcome. Thank you, Al Jazeera. Thank you. Thank you.